of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of our Lord, bringing the Christmas season to its close. We call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves for this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption reborn of water in the Holy Spirit may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear night to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by a strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his re recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes, ewes with care. The word of the Lord. his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly powers. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bow down before the Lord majestic in holiness. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord upon the waters the Lord on the immensity of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendor. The Lord will bless his people with The God of glory thunders. In his temple they all cry glory. The Lord sat enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with Peace. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. And the voice of the Father thundered. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized and Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the the bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Many, many years ago, I was brought by my parents and godparents to St. Patrick's Church to be baptized. A year later, my brother Jerry came along, and again my parents and his godparents took him to St. Patrick's Church to be baptized, as were all of my siblings. When my came time for my brother Jerry to get married, he was married at St. Patrick's Church, and I had the honor of being asked to be his best man. When he and his wife had their first son, Jeremiah, and they took him to St. Patrick's Church, I had the other honor of being his first son's godfather. A year ago, when my brother's first son, of whom I am godfather, had his first son, he and his wife, and the godparents brought him to St. Patrick's Church where he was baptized, and this time I was the priest, all at the same baptismal font. And I said to my family who were gathered there at the time, no matter how far we may wander, and no matter how much we may neglect Holy Mother the Church, 
She never wanders far from us, and she never forgets us. It's a little bit like our relationship with God. No matter how much we may neglect him, no matter how far somebody may wander from him, he never neglects us, and he is always there beside us. This weekend, as I mentioned, we celebrate the sacrament of the baptism of our Lord, and it brings the Christmas season to its end. And when we think about or meditate upon our Lord Jesus Christ going to be baptized by John the Baptist, his cousin, we might ask ourselves, well, why would Jesus need to be baptized? He wasn't born with original sin. He never committed any personal sins. So why would he go to be baptized by John the Baptist? John the Baptist's baptism was not a sacrament. It was a rite. It was a ritual. It was a symbolic washing. John the Baptist, preparing for the coming of our Savior, had said, Repent, the kingdom of God is near. And so people would go down to the River Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist as a sign, as a ritual, that they were washing themselves clean of their past sins in order to live new and holy lives, obeying God's commandments, so that they would be ready when the Savior came. When our Lord Jesus Christ came, he preached the kingdom of heaven is here. And we need to be repentant of our sins in order to receive his sacrament, the sacrament of baptism in which we use water, but we are being baptized in fire and the Holy Spirit. John's was simply a symbol. Our Lord's is a symbol that confers a real reality. The fire of the Holy Spirit purges us of original sin. John's was a sign that we were trying to change. Baptism in Christ, we are changed. We are absolved of our sins, just as we are in the sacrament of reconciliation. It's a process for all of us. First, we repent, and we open ourselves up for the grace of being reconciled by God by absolution. But why did Jesus go to be baptized? Well, first of all, it was his first step into the public square. We know very little about his youth. We know something about his birth. But sometime around the age of 30, he shows up on the banks of the River Jordan, and John the baptizer looks up and says, Behold, the Lamb of God, who'll take away the sins of the world. And he comes down and he says to John, You need to be baptized. I want to be baptized by you. And our Lord's first step into the rivers of the water of the River Jordan were, in fact, his first public step to Calvary. He was not taking any sins of his own into the waters of the River Jordan. He already had the weight of our sins on his shoulders. And it was our sins he was taking in to the River Jordan. With the same weight, as the heavy weight of the cross in which he carried our sins up to Mount Calvary. And it was there that he died for our sins, where he paid the ultimate price for our sins. And when our Lord died, as we well know, and as is depicted in any crucifix, our own crucifixion seen here, after he had died, he was lanced, and it pierced his sacred heart. And he literally not only died, but he gave his last drop of blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And the scriptures tell us when they pierced his sacred side, out from his heart flowed water and blood. And the church has always taught that those were signs of sacramental grace being poured out into the world. Water being a symbol of baptism, his blood being a symbol of his body and blood made present to us in the Eucharist. That's one reason our Lord was baptized. Another was, we might say, is when he stepped into the Jordan, he created what we might call the first holy water. He created for the first time water that could be blessed and be made holy. 
He made it possible for us in the blessed water of a baptismal font to be united with the mystery of the death and resurrection of our Lord. It's why we bless ourselves with holy water every time we come into the church, a reminder that through the waters of grace of our Lord's baptism, we are receiving absolution for our sins. He also was baptized, I think, to give us an example to follow. And that example is that baptism is the first step to living a spiritual life. Baptism is our first religious experience in which we begin our life with God. And as our Lord was ascending into heaven, he looked down at the apostles and he says to them, go forth and make disciples of all nations. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you and to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Holy Mother Church has been doing it from the very beginning. She continues to do it at St. Patrick's Church in Stoneham. She continues to do it every weekend here at St. Thomas More Parish, obeying the commandment Christ gave to us to make disciples of Christ by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The definition of a sacrament is that they are visible signs given to us by Christ that confer upon us a particular grace that help configure us into the person of Christ, that help us to do what we cannot do on our own, which is to become holy. So, for example, at the Last Supper, he gave us bread and wine as the sign. He gave us the words to use for consecration, by which bread and wine in just a few moments will truly become his body, his blood, the food of everlasting life. And if you were listening to the gospel proclamation just a few moments ago, three things happened to our Lord when he came up from the waters of the River Jordan, when he came up from the waters of baptism. First, the heavens were opened up. Second, the Holy Spirit came and hovered upon him. And third, the voice of his Father in heaven was heard to say, you are my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Those same three things happened to each and every one of us when we came up from the waters of our own baptism. The visible sign of coming up from the water conferred upon us three invisible things. First, for the very first time, the heavenly gates open up for us. Those gates that were locked shut when Adam and Eve were expelled are now opened for you and me. And second, even though we don't see it, the Holy Spirit, the fire of the love of God, comes to dwell within us. And he comes with gifts. For the first time, we receive the gift of faith, hope, and charity. Faith that allows us to see God in this world, hope that asks us to reach out and embrace God in the world, and charity that gives us the ability to take delight in embracing God. And even though we don't hear it, the third thing that happens is God looks down and says, this is my beloved child. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. We use the term we are born again in baptism because we are truly born again. As little children, we're born by our parents in the order of nature, and in the order of nature, all things pass, all things are mortal. But when we are reborn and born again, we are born into the order of grace, we truly become sons and daughters of God, and sons and daughters of God share in his immortality. Today, as I say, we celebrate the end of Christmas by reminding ourselves of the baptism of our Lord. We must remember always that at Christmas we don't celebrate the birth of a babe, we celebrate the birth of a Savior. We celebrate the birth of Jesus, which means God saves. And what does he save us from? From our sin and our death. By way of an invitation, he gives us hope and peace and joy that we indeed are immortal and can share in the divinity of God in the kingdom of heaven forever. But it comes as an invitation. Nobody's going to be dragged in kipping and screaming. Nobody's going to go in who could care less. But those who say yes and say yes proactively, those who take that first step of being baptized,
Those who realize by being baptized and becoming a child of God calls us to live a life worthy and noble of that calling. And so as we bring the Christmas season to a close, let us strive to live lives worthy of that noble calling. Let us respond positively to the invitation. For those who have been baptized, no matter how far they've wandered, no matter how much they neglect, Holy Mother Church, or God himself. For them, the gates of heaven have been opened up. The Holy Spirit does and always will dwell within them. And God the Father is always looking upon us, saying to us, you are my beloved child, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, he is incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In gratitude to our Heavenly Father's gift of baptism, we now turn to our Father and raise to him our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that its members might fulfill their baptismal vocation as missionaries of Christ's love and mercy in the world, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve selflessly in government and for all who seek to assist those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and the suffering, that God, who gives life to all things, will share his life with those who are most afflicted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who reside in the land of the River Jordan, and all who work for peace and tranquility in the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the renewal of Christian marriage and family life, and an increase in vocations to priesthood and consecrated life, especially among the youth of our own parish community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the physical and spiritual protection of those who defend our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners, members of our families and friends who are ill, for the eternal rest of the faithful departed, especially Peggy Van Munchen and Teddy Balkind, and for Rick Stewart, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Almighty Father, hear the prayers of your people. Answer them accordingly to your will as we offer them through the intercession of Our Lady, praying together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Above its sad and lowly plains, they bend on By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Oh. 
take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
gates of heaven adore him. Angel hosts his praise as sing. Powers, dominions bow before him and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent. Every voice in concert ring. Evermore and Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to you, our only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord, amen. Just two announcements. Religious education continues to follow a modified schedule for January 9th through the 13th. Families with registered students should please review emails from the Religious Ed Office for full details. And second, the 30th annual Midnight Run Collection begins next weekend on the 15th and continues until Friday the 5th of February. The youth group would appreciate your assistance with food and clothing items. Details are included in this week's bulletin, which we encourage you to take as you leave church today. Uh, so, so uh, religious education, uh, as you can imagine, we're kind of in a state of flux. So in addition to checking for emails, I'm sure you can find updated information on the parish website. And for the Midnight Run Collection, please do check the bulletin, and we'll have some flyers out in the narthex because there are some items they could use, and there are some items that would be of no use. So um, we'll, we'll just follow up on that before you actually make a, a donation of, of food or, or clothing. Uh, this is also the last time I can say to you a merry and blessed Christmas this year, so merry and blessed Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl amongst the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Oh.